First one is a catalog service for Adobe Commerce, and the second one is community prioritization. The second one is community prioritization process. Um, so we will start uh, with catalog services for Adobe Commerce first. Before we begin, I just wanted to let you all know I'm based in Austin, Texas, and we are experiencing severe winter storm. So, you know, power lines are down, uh, trees are down. Uh, it's really, really cold outside. So in case I lose power or connection, uh, but if the meeting is still on, please continue. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know. So with that, I will hand it over to Sandra. Thank you, uh, Parul. And don't worry, hopefully you'll be fine. But we know, we are aware that uh, there are some issues with electricity and things over uh, in the US. So thanks for letting us know. And I think uh, from the list of people that I see on the call, I think uh, m most of you already know me, but there are few of you that probably we haven't met before. So I'm Sandra Gonzalez. I'm senior product manager working with Adobe already for some time. And I'm now working with the catalog service for Adobe Commerce. And that's the main topic that I'm going to share with you today. And let me just share my screen. Yeah, so you should be able to see my screen now, hopefully. Okay, yes. so uh, thank you. So yes, I'm going to be talking about the capital service, as I just said, and I just, uh, oh, I'm just starting with the last slide. So maybe better to start with the first one. Uh, so I'm also going to be uh, presenting together with Lucian, who is our senior computer scientist, and is going to be taking care of the demo of the catalog service in a little bit more technical details. And we also have Russ Van, uh, that is the senior engineer manager, and, and will be supporting the conversation. And, and in which case, please feel free to ask questions over the chat. If you if you have any doubts or any ideas, uh, he can support us during the this conversation. Uh, so first, uh, um, I think some of you might already uh, know of uh, more about the Catholic service, but I just want to make sure that we are all on the same page and give you an introduction of what the Catholic service is. And it's a uh, uh, a SaaS service is one of the SaaS services similar to what we have with live search and product recommendations. So it's independent from our core, from the Adobe Commerce core. Basically, augment the APIs that we have with the, the catalog GraphQL APIs or the core APIs that we have at the moment. And the idea is that returns a product data much faster than what we have with the core APIs. And when I say much faster, uh, we've seen in our testing, and I just want to highlight that that's what we've seen in our testing, but the performance improvement depends in a lot of factors, the, the environment, the data, the catalog, the settings that you have on each of the projects. But on our testing, we have seen up to 10 times faster catalog data retrieval, so and, and responses under 200 milliseconds, which is a, a very, very good compared to what you might have seen in, in existing projects. Uh, so that's the, the one of the big uh, improvements and benefits that we are offering with the catalog service. And we, I, I also want to highlight that we, are, we support B2B use cases with shared catalogs. So that's something that is a, uh, out of the box with the catalog service from the beginning since we launched the service uh, later last year in October. Then, because it's a SaaS service and it's a double manage, so it is uh, scalable, it is cloud native, and uh, because it is independent from the core, the goal is that it also lowers the traffic on, on commerce service, which should help to improve the performance on commerce service as well. The, the catalog service it has the possibility to work by itself as a standalone, or it can also work together with uh, other SaaS services, uh, basically right now, for recommendations and light search. And I'm going to get into a little bit more details uh, into that. 
but it's it's the idea of all our SaaS services that they complement each other and they improve the experience uh, both for the developers and for the end users uh, for all our commerce customers. And when I say all our commerce customers, I'm also implying that the catalog service is only available for commerce merchants and it's uh, it doesn't it doesn't require additional it's not an additional price, so it is uh, available at no cost. Okay, so, and this is a, a high level overview of the, how is the catalog service interacting together with Adobe Commerce Monolith and with the heads, uh, the storefronts and other SaaS services. So what you can see here, on the, on the left of the diagram, you see core GraphQL APIs. That's the GraphQL APIs that we have already available today. And, and that if they are all integrated with uh, Adobe Commerce and they can be integrated with different uh, heads. Uh, PWA is one of them, but it could be uh, any other front end that the merchant uh, is using. And uh, as you can see here, we, we are showing the storefront latency, that this is the time that it takes for the core to respond or to, 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 to retrieve the product data to the front end. And Sandra, here is where um, we, yeah. Sandra, sorry to interrupt. Are you sharing your screen? Oh, wow, I, I, I thought. Yeah. I thought I was, but it looks like I wasn't. Is it? Okay. Can you see it? Yes, now? we can see it now. Yeah, we can see it. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. I, I was not sharing anything very interesting before. So this is where the fun starts. Uh, okay. So what I was uh, talking about is this storefront latency, as we call it. And basically, this is the time to get the product data uh, on this front end, on the storefront from, in this case, when it's through the core GraphQL APIs, it comes directly from commerce, from, from the monolith, from the Adobe Commerce monolith. And this is the latency, this is the time that the catalog service is improving significantly. And the way it's done is that we have our SaaS services, that is this uh, bubble that you see here. And our SaaS services are indexing data. In this case, we are indexing product data and storing product data within the catalog service. And then this data is already calculated. Uh, so we are not doing any calculations like price calculations and anything that it it is something that is consuming a lot of time when you are asking for this data directly to the monolith. So that's what it helps to get uh, the data much faster because it's, it, it, it's also an improvement on the technology that we're using, but it's also that it's getting the data simplified much easily. And you will see also on the, what is that we're using, how we have improved and simplified the, the queries that uh, we, we have on the catalog service to simplify the product data retrieval as well. Also something that uh, it, it's great to have together with the catalog service is our storefront gateway. What the storefront gateway does is that it federates all our SaaS services. So we are still working on product recommendations, but it is already available for live search. And what happened with live search is that it's amazing and it's an, an intelligent uh, uh, enjoined that returns amazing results based on the criteria that merchants have defined. Uh, the, but it has some limitations as well. And the limitations that it has, some of them, we are complementing them with the catalog service through the, cat, the storefront gateway. So what we have done here is that when you're asking results through product search query, you are getting the list of products from live search 
but with the product data from the catalog service, which is retrieving more data than what Live Search is, uh, has at the moment. And when I'm saying more, more data, I'm referring to custom product attributes, options, and we're also planning to include color swatches. Uh, as you can see here, you can use the, the store from Gateway API directly uh, to connect with any uh, front end. Uh, and there's another option. So the next option that I'm going to show you is the possibility to use the catalog service and well, also potentially live search and product recommendations, of course, uh, through the API match. The API Mesh, as you know, is it allows you the capability to integrate multiple systems. And we, I have just highlighted here uh, just what it relates to Adobe Commerce, but you can also use it to integrate with any other third-party system. In this case, what uh, we are providing, I, I mentioned at the beginning that the catalog service augments the, the core GraphQL APIs and the features that we have right now. So our intent is not to replace all the features that we have today within the core GraphQL API. The main reason is because we are focused on the features that provide better and higher value to our customers. So, but we don't want to limit the possibilities of using the catalog service because of some features might be missing uh, on the implementation as we are not planning to have 100% feature part. So the idea is that through the API mesh, it is easy and possible to connect and to get the data both from the catalog service with a high in performance improvement and all the data not available in the catalog service through the core GraphQL APIs within the same uh, query. So the idea is that we are complementing the performance improvements with specific features that are not available on our on our SaaS service. And one example is if uh, the the product entity ID that we don't have it within the catalog service, and we are at the moment not planning to introduce it into our query because of the risk and the complexity of adding that. But it is possible to get it through the API mesh connecting with the core Graph GraphQL API. Another option is, uh, for example, another case is that at the moment, we don't have support on the catalog service for tier pricing. It is something that we have on the Roma for this year, but it's still not available. So this is something that it could also be uh, implemented through Mesh using core GraphQL APIs. And with this, I want to uh, share a little bit more of what we're planning to do also uh, uh, on our roadmap, what's our roadmap looking like uh, this year. And so the, first we're working on the category API and the idea is that the category API will allow our merchants to render the top menu uh, navigation, but it will also be used uh, by iMerge uh, to improve the rules that they have. So the capabilities of uh, the intelligent merchandising that we will be providing. Then we are also uh, planning to have a product detail page micro front end, which might sound special or, or challenging. So the idea is of the micro front end um, is to align with unified storefront strategy that we are moving forward. We are on a very, very early stages at the moment. That's why we are uh, considering what's the best option. Sorry, I'm still, am I still sharing my screen? Because it's telling me a message here on, on Teams that I it stopped sharing. Yeah, yeah, we can still see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's working, okay. yeah. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so, uh, Okay, let me just go back to the product page microphone then. So our plan is to uh, go big uh, with Unify Storefront, but we are at the moment analyzing 
what's the best approach for us? Because we have been working, we started working on this micro content. It's basically a piece of front end that will help our merchants to render the product detail pages using capital service APIs very quickly uh, with simplified uh, uh, ways of developer experience. So allow, allowing you to customize it and to have the design the merchant wants to have. So we are now uh, uh, planning and deciding which, uh, if we want to go uh, and deliver something quickly that our customers can start using uh, very soon, or that if we, we want to wait for the whole unified storefront strategy and deliver something together with all the micro contents that other teams are also planning to work on. Uh, having said that, the, the idea of the micro content is that it will be agnostic, but we are planning to adapt the micro content to each of the main front ends that we have. And right now we're focusing on Luma and AEM. So the, with this, our intent is that Luma and AEM customers will be able to adopt the micro content and start using the catalog service very easily. As uh, I said before, we are uh, working and planning and defining how to approach this. And that's why I'm calling for partners and merchants. So if you feel this is something that resonates with you and you're interested in knowing more, potentially to collaborate with us, feel free to drop an email to, to my inbox. Uh, I'll be more than happy to, to talk with you about this. And then we have, uh, we're also planning to improve. This is not a, uh, within the catalog service, but it's also that I know it concerns a lot of our customers, that is the size price indexing, uh, so that it impacts the time to import data from Adobe Commerce and to make it available to the storefront. So with this initiative, our idea, our intent is to improve the performance of this data injection so we will reduce the time that it takes from the moment that you update a, a product or that you uh, uh, import a product or multiple products within Adobe Commerce and those products get available into the storefront. Then we have uh, the possibility to enable prices for SaaS on Luma projects. And the idea is that for this initiative, what we're planning to do is to allow Luma customers to decide whether they, you want to continue using prices from the monolith or you rather uh, use prices from SaaS, which will help you improve the performance of your SaaS. And, and then it, this is, by the way, not listed on any specific order, but uh, it's, it's just showing you what we're planning to work on and we are still defining uh, what's gonna come next in the next few months. And then we have the catalog sync dashboard. At the moment, this only works for product recommendations. And it basically it shows how data, the status of the data synchronized between Adobe Commerce Monolith and product recommendations. So we, ha we want to have this visual representation of the status of the data also taken into account the catalog service. And then I'm just going to jump this because I think, Lucian, you're going to go into the details. These are the queries that we have. Uh, just want to uh, highlight that from seven product types that we have within Adobe Commerce, we have simplified that to two different product views. That, that are, those are simple products and complex products that will map to different uh, product types related to Adobe Commerce. I'm going to leave it now to Lucian. Uh, I just want to show this before we jump to the demo, uh, in case we don't have time once we finish with the, with the demo. But if you want to know more about the catalog service, you can join the community Slack channel store from services, or you can write an email both either to, to myself or, or to Ross Van on, on our emails. And now, all to you, Lucian. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, so I'm gonna give like a brief overview of uh, of the of the queries that you can do with the catalog service and also like uh, how the data looks like. Uh, for this, we have built like a super simple uh, React application is running on my local host right now, and that is consuming the uh, the catalog service available at catalogservice.adobe.io. 
and uh, I'm gonna walk through uh, each each query as they happen. Uh, okay, so first, uh, like Sandra said, the the catalog service exposes like three uh, types of query. Uh, uh, you can do like a product uh, uh, find based on the SKU. You can do a refine, which I'm gonna talk a bit more uh, as the demo goes on. And also, it offers since catalog service is a federated gateway. It's also integrated with live search, so you can do live search queries from catalog service, uh, but with enriched data. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's move on. So uh, first of all, this like this is a sample PDP that a, a developer may build using the catalog service. So as the page loads, uh, the client can do a product uh, query to fetch the the details about the uh, about the product, so uh, you you can get information like uh, the SKU, the name, description, images, and you can also filter images by roles. You can get uh, attributes, uh, and you, you can also do a, a filtering based on attribute role. In the future, we'll also introduce uh, pagination for attributes in case there are a lot of attributes being returned. And like Sandra said. Uh, we have simplified the, the model. Uh, we only have like two types of product now, the, the simple product and complex product, uh, like a super quick definition. Uh, simple product is any type of product that, that, that does not have an option. So if anything has an option, it's complex product. If it does not, it, it, it's a simple one. Uh, okay. And uh, uh, also uh, complex products can have uh, uh, price ranges as opposed to like a fixed price. And uh, uh, for example, if you have like uh, a grouped or bundled product, then uh, the option is an actual product itself. And this is how you can actually get the data for that product. Okay, so as the page load, uh, the client will do like a, a product query and it will get information uh, about the product, the images, options like colors and sizes, uh, description, and, uh, and custom attributes or dynamic attributes. Uh, very important, we also support the B2B. If, and for example, you can uh, disable the add to car button, you can hide the prices or you can hide the product uh, altogether. Uh, the next up, let's say a, a shopper decides to uh, filter by or to select an option. And uh, let's say, for example, it selects the, the green color. Uh, we also support uh, images based on, uh, on the selection. So when a shopper selects an option, then a refined query is, uh, is made into the, the catalog service. It has like two parameters. One is the SKU for the product that you uh, you're doing very fine. And then uh, you have an actual option uh, selected. In, in this case, I think this one is, uh, is color green. And based on, uh, on the options pass here, it will return a, a product, which uh, it's basically the same product, but only with the options uh, available. So for example, in this case, if we take a look, I think it will only return, yeah, it will only return option for sizes. Uh, Next up, let's say the, the shopper selects a size S, for example, and you will get back this time. If you do a fine query and you, and you select uh, another option, let's say, I'm also selecting a uh, size S, and you'll get back, the, this time you'll get a simple product, you will not have any options uh, le left to select, and uh, you'll get a simple product with a uh, with a fixed price, and you won't get back like a, a price range like you, you would do for a complex. So basically, when the shopper has to select all the necessary options, the refined query will return a uh, simple product. If not, it will return a a complex product. Um, yeah. Also, uh, like I said earlier, we. You, we're, we're doing a, uh, we have a federated gateway together with live search. So for example, you can do uh, product searches in catalog service. This will uh, internally use uh, live search to fetch the list of product, but you, you, you can enrich the data return with the uh, data coming from catalog service. So stuff like uh, attributes and uh, options are not normally supported by live search, but with catalog service, you can actually get them. So. For example, uh, if you 
if you uh, search for hoodie. Uh, yeah, you can get back a list of uh, these. All these products are, are coming from live search, but for example, the color and the and the size, these options are actually coming from catalog service due to the federated gateway that we have uh, we have it, uh, implemented. Uh, right now, we don't offer all the all the features that are available in the in the monolith. Uh, uh, GraphQL API, but uh, with, uh, for, for example, API mesh, you can uh, enrich the data coming from catalog service to include stuff that we don't support. Uh, one example would be, for example, uh, this is an option. This is a, a super simple example that I made using uh, API mesh. Uh, I've injected the uh, information coming from uh, the core uh, uh, Adobe Commerce GraphQL API into the catalog service API, so stuff like tier prices or entity ID, stuff that we don't support right now, you can actually uh, get them from the, the monolith, the Adobe Commerce uh, API. Oh yeah, so that's about it. That's great, thank you, Lucian. So I think we have the uh, 15 minutes or more, a little bit more, just in case someone wants to ask questions or ideas uh, to any of us, we'll be more than happy to, to help you with. Yeah, I don't see question on the chat, but if anybody would like to ask live, sure, please go ahead. And you can always reach out to Sandra, Lucian, and Rizwan later on. Uh, I think, Sandra, you had the contact details and uh, the Slack channel details on the slide. Yeah, I'm going to actually share it on the chat so everybody have them uh, easy access. So let me just drop this here. Awesome, great. Thanks, there Sandra. Thanks, yeah. All right. Thank you. So now Great. Now we'll move to our second topic, which is community prioritization process. And I realized I did not introduce myself. So those of you who don't know me, my name is Parul Sanha and I work for Commerce Community Engineering team as a software engineer. So let me share my screen real quick and then we'll talk about community prioritization process. So this is something that we kicked off last year um, around October, November timeframe. And Ritesh Samani uh, spoke about it in Meet Magento New York event in September. So he has this uh, dev blog post out that talks about this process. Basically, the goal for us to introduce this process was to empower the community. That was our real goal, to empower in the sense that we want the community to tell us what they want us to work on, like you know where they want uh, to focus our energy on. So the second thing is that they can be the drivers of what goes into the code base of Magento Open Source. So this is really impactful and we really want to see community getting involved, which we did see uh, since we launched this program. And it's really simple, like how it works is super simple. All uh, you have to do is if you are a Magento uh, technology enthusiast, all you need to do is get onto GitHub um, log in from your account, make sure that you're logged in, and then you have all the pull requests, right? So here you can take a look at all of these pull requests and the ones that you like the most, the ones that matters most to you, you can upvote the pull request. So you can just click on it and here you have, um, you know, reactions, make sure to upvote it. Now what we are doing at our end, let me go back to pull requests. So what we do is we sort it on the basis of reaction. And then. Yeah, and then we pick a set to work on, right? Based on the maximum reactions, maximum upvote thumbs up that the pull request has got. And we add a label called project community pit to the PR and then that PR shows up on this community dashboard. This is the dashboard that we have created for, for this process. 
and you would see that all these community picked um what happened let me reload it once okay uh, you would see that all these uh, label project uh, community picked labeled prs that would show up here I need to, there's something going on here, I feel, because I'm not seeing all the tickets here today. I will have to uh, look into it, what happened to the ones that were here in pending review and review in process. I'll double check that, but uh, that is how this whole thing works. And then our internal team, uh, we pick, you know, the ones that are ready for testing, like here, and then we start working on it, make sure that you know um, it works well. If everything is ready, if we have all the approval that is needed, then it would show up here in Merge in Progress. Then we open a mainline PR, and then that gets merged into the code base. So this is the whole process. And from time to time, uh, we are sharing updates about uh, you know, the progress that we are making. And that updates get shared under the dev blog on the forum. So like you would see, I published a January update two weeks ago. And um, this is the status that we have so far. Um, for like, you know, so far we have processed two sets of PR. The third one, the third set is already on the dashboard. And uh, this is the status as of two weeks ago. And if you would like to see like the real time status, then you can always go back to this community dashboard and see. So like you can see, we have already merged five PRs, two got closed um, and um, one is ready to merge, two in testing. But this is the big chunk that, you know, uh, that we also rely on the community to help us on, which is the in review, like, right? Like we have a team of community maintainers. They work on the these uh, PRs, they review it. Once it's ready for testing, then our team takes it on. So we, this is like you know this process is two way like we definitely need um to hear from the community to kind of you know to work on the prs that they want us to work on but then we also need help from the community in reviewing them so this is like you know a two-way process and real quick um let me take a pause here and ask if there's any question around this process anybody i think there's something in the chat okay sandra has to leave that's fine if not, then I just wanted to uh, quickly, uh, you know, give a plug about our newsletters. So I've been publishing monthly newsletters, and uh, if you are not subscribed to it, if you're not getting, um, you know, notification about the newsletters, then please make sure that on the forum here, you know, when you go to news and announcements, you should see here subscribe for me it's unsubscribe because i'm already subscribed but if you're not make sure that you subscribe to this news and announcement so that whenever the newsletter is out you get an update the reason i'm stressing on this newsletter is because you know we cover updates from both adobe commerce and magento open source and always there would be a section that would talk about community prioritization process, uh, like, you know, the progress that we are making. So I'll make sure to have this section all the time on the newsletter. So this is another place that, you know, if you want to see how it's going, this is a good place to go for. That's all I have. If there's any question, I would be happy to take. OK, if not, then um, I think we can wrap it up. Thanks for joining everyone, and uh, we'll meet again in the next Hangout session. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.